Welcome into the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. We're going to do a little more of a deep dive into what's going on with the Skinny Joey Barney Belomo uh, controversy related uh, to uh, the Philadelphia Mafia Don uh, Joey Merlino's podcast and uh, New York, uh, some of the bosses uh, in the New York families getting uh, up in arms at, uh, about this over the last couple months seems to have been a slow burn, uh, slow boil uh, that's now kind of like a five alarm fire all of a sudden. And I want to like shed some context and take us back to kind of the root um, of the relationship between Skinny Joey and Barney Belomo, the boss of Genevieve's crime family, the boss of bosses. Yeah, I said it. Uh, obviously, I'm not being literal. I see a lot of people online uh, oh, doesn't, you know, Scott, no, there's no more boss of bosses and there's no more commission. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm just referring to the fact that Barney Belomo is the most powerful mafia Don in America right now. And definitely in New York City, his weight holds more weight than any of the other bosses in New York City, as well as any other bosses in the other regional mafia families. So, I've reported that Barney feels kind of personally slighted by Joey because he co-signed Joey's uh, ascent to, to being a Don about 25 years ago. But let's kind of get even more granular. And uh, this all this question about whether or not uh, Joey Merlino was going to be recognized, whether the Merlino era was ever going to truly be um, greenlit, co-signed by New York City. All goes back to April 10th, 1999, and the murder of Gino Marconi, who was the son of a pretty, you know, relatively influential Philly mob soldier from back in the day, uh, Guarino Marconi. They called him Mark. Uh, him and his brother, uh, Funzi, Mar uh, Funzi Marconi, Alphonse Marconi, were very close friends, associates, criminal co-conspirators with the one and only little Nicky Scarfo, uh, the maniacal, bloodthirsty Philadelphia Mafia Don in the 1980s. And you can trace most of Joey Merlino's headaches uh, as boss of the Philadelphia Mafia to his rivalry with a man that had been his like baptismal godfather and had been very close to him for the first part of his life and very close to his dad, uh, Nicky Scarfo. And Scarfo's tried... And before Scarfo died, uh, he tried uh, numerous times to trip up uh, Joey and his rise up the uh, criminal food chain in the East Coast. So it's the spring of 1999. Uh, uh, Ralph Natale has been pretty much pushed out of the boss's seat in Philadelphia. Marlino takes it for himself. He'd already been basically a, a street boss, underboss, front boss for the previous couple of years. But now it's kind of officially his. We all know that he, him and Ralph rose to power in an unconventional manner. They kind of made themselves, or Joey was made, but he made Ralph. Ralph made himself boss. Kind of strange. But Ralph had sanctioning from New York City. Uh, so when Joey's you know, on the ascent, taking over as official boss at that point, Gino Marconi is an independent racketeer in South Philly. He's doing a lot of different things, bookmaking, loan sharking, drugs. Uh, he's running like a you know, makeshift auto yard, making a lot of money. And the Merlinos want a piece of it, or he had given the Merlinos a piece of it, I think, when Ralph was there. And then when Joey took over, his father, a Nicky Scarfo disciple, at that point, Nicky Scarfo had been locked up for 12 years. Um, but his father tells Gino, uh, you don't have to recognize Joey. We don't recognize him. New York doesn't recognize him. And basically go, you know, Joey, go fuck yourself. Tell Joey to go fuck himself. Um, and tell Joey's guys to go fuck themselves. This leads to, if you believe the FBI, uh, the Merlino crew putting a contract on Gino Marconi's head. He's killed on April 10th, walking out of his house in South Philly. He's his girlfriend, uh, Patty Miley, was uh, shot and wounded in the attack. And this sets off a string of meetings and sit downs, both in prison and uh, on the street, uh, 
between the Philly guys, New York City. Barney is in prison at this point, and it's like a six to eight month ordeal about whether or not New York is going to recognize and sanction uh, Joey Merlino's ascent to boss. Now, we all know that Joey would get locked up a couple months later in the summer of 99, be convicted at the 2001 uh, trial in Philly and go do 12 years in jail. And you know, his his uh, his guys uh, that were left on the street, mainly Uncle Joe Legambi, had to take over. And Legambi, just one of the most underrated mafia dons uh, of all time, did such a miraculous job putting that thing back together. But there were some real questions there, it, you know, throughout the rest of 1999 and into 2000 about what was going to happen. We know that there was a plot being hatched by the New Jersey faction of the Philadelphia mob, Pete the Crumb, uh, with the Lucchese's and the Gambinos. Again, Lucchese's, that's a Nicky Scarfo play because of his relationship to to, those, uh, to that uh, organization. And uh, there was a plan to kill Joe Legambi, Georgie Boy Borghese, Handsome Stevie, uh, Mazzone. Uh, that got, you know, uh, blown up. The plot got blown up because Pete the Crumb uh, got uh, locked up. Georgie and Stevie got locked up. Pete the Crumb flips. But Barney Belomo, who at the time was known as the, if he wasn't the boss, he was the boss in waiting. He was the chin's protege. The chin had gone to jail in 97, was in uh, failing health. And Barney was, he was the guy even though he was locked up, even though he would be locked up for another decade, uh, he was the guy. And I'm told that through these sit-downs, Barney eventually sent out word to New York City that they were recognizing Joey Merlino. But it all goes back to him having to go to bat for Joey because Nicky Scarfo and his boys, the Marconi brothers, um, were telling their son, their nephew, uh, that uh, they didn't need to recognize Joey. And that's when it came to Barney having to step in, uh, validate, that Merlino administration, uh, which has led to him being offended that Merlino and this podcast is, is causing so many issues. We have more news, fresh news, fresh insight to report this week that we'll be coming out with uh, related to that controversy and the fact that, according to our sources, Barney uh, and the Gambinos have put out like a what I'm being told is like a leverage embargo uh stopping temporarily stopping business with philly to try to leverage joey out of the podcasting game and i'm told possibly out of the fold altogether and just depose him uh, as punishment for you know breaking this these rules that they feel are, are so sick are, are so sacred uh joey would tell you he's no longer the boss there's nothing to depose him from and uh, he's just trying to go legit so Again, I'm just reporting uh, what we're hearing on both sides of this, and we will always give you the most uh, pressing, breaking, and exclusive news here at the OG Pod. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, out. Mm -hmm.